नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निम्न गानम यथा गंगा देवाच्युत यथा वैष्णवाशंभो पुराणाम तथा Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada Shla Prabhupada Ki Jai. Just as the Ganga is the greatest of all rivers, Lord Achyuta, the supreme among deities, and Lord Shambhu Shiva, the greatest of Vaishnavas, so Shri Mad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all Puranas. So let's try to understand the Shiva Tattva. It's very very complex. In fact, for myself also. I always had this desire to do some research and try to understand what is the Shiva Tattva all about. Always there's a confusion. Who is this Lord Shiva? Senior devotees say that he is not a living entity. He is not. He is not uh, Vishnu also. Then who is he? We just have few tattvas which we understand. So what are the three tattvas that uh, widely known in the Vaishnav community? Vishnu Tattva, Jiva Tattva, and Shakti Tattva. so all the vishnu tattvas all the different incarnations of the lord all the forms of the lord they are called as personality of godhead and there is one supreme personality of godhead that is krishna so we have personality of godheads so we have all these different uh, forms of the lord you name it any vishnu incarnation you know this is called as personality of god so vishnu tattva and when it comes to jiva tattva So, by the way, Vishnu Tattva is Swa Amsha. So, there are two types of expansions of the Lord: Swa Amsha and Vibhin Amsha. So, Swa Amsha. So, it's his own expansion, and Vibhin Amsha is separated one, and that separated expansion is called as Jiva Tattva or living entities. There's all of us. And then, when it comes to the Shaktis, the various energies of the Lord, they come in the category of Shakti Tattva. so we have the internal potency of the lord and the external potency of the lord we have shrimati radharani and we have Sh- shrimati durga also so they come under shakti tattva so in this way we have jiva tattva then we have vishnu tattva jiva tattva and then shakti tattva now if the question comes shiva comes in which tattva so is he jiva tattva the answer is no is he vishnu tattva the answer is no then what is this all about who is this personality what tattva he belongs to and there is a fourth tattva for lord shiva and that's called as shiva tattva or also called as shambhu tattva hmm. so this point is very very important to note that he is a different category altogether because he is krishna but not krishna let's try to understand the statement now now see we have various devi devatas so all these different devi devatas there are different positions that we have and various living entities of this world they acquire that position you name it and that the position is available and you do the necessary uh, activities gain enough punya and go to that place we can become indra we can become chandra we can become surya you can try and see it works <laughs> Shila <laughs> Prabhupada in one of the place he made the statement that uh, if the devotees are not doing intense bhakti they'll go to heaven. And one devotee was sharing 80% of the devotees can go to heaven. Yes. No. <laughs> We are all aspiring to go to Goloka Vrindavan not to heaven. No one is interested or no one should be interested to go to heaven. So here one thing is very clear that all these devi devata the positions and different personalities acquire that position like we have surya dev it's a position and as of now vivaswan has acquired that position 
Indra Dev is a position. Purandar has acquired that position. And next Manavantara, Bali Maharaj is going to acquire that position. So in this way, <clears throat> position and personality. Hope this is clear. But when it comes to Lord Shiva, no living entity can take that position. No living entity becomes qualified or can become qualified to become Lord Shiva. Not possible. One can try becoming Indra, Chandra, Varuna, etc. But one cannot become Lord Shiva. So this is the point in a way, which is uh, very important to note. And when it comes to Lord Shiva, he is also personality of Godhead. Like we have other Vishnu Tattvas, they are called as personality of Godhead and Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. Similarly, Lord Shiva is also personality of Godhead, but he is not supreme personality of Godhead. So now here comes the confusion then. Then easy Vishnu Tattva then. And Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsri Thakur in the commentary to Brahma Samhita, he says, Shambhu, who is the separated portion of Govinda, imbued with the principle of his subjective plenary portion. So who is Shambhu? He is a separated portion of Govinda and he is in the mood of servitorship, subservient to Govinda. So he is not Govinda, but he is subservient to Govinda. He is separated. So see the position of Lord Shiva. He is personality of Godhead, but he is separated from the Lord. Like we are Vibhya Namsha, we are separated from the Lord. And when it comes to Vishnu Tattvas, they are with the Lord. So there are two distinct ones. That is Swa Amsha and Vibhya Namsha. But now when it comes to Lord Shiva, he is in between. He is not Swa Amsha also, he is not Vibhya Namsha also. He is personality of Godhead, but he is separated personality of Godhead. I hope uh, you know this concept theoretically at least and you know, I will be able to understand. Talking about the qualities, you know, to understand more deeper where he actually stands between Jiva and Vishnu. Where, 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 he, where he actually stands. How many qualities Lord Krishna has? That's it. 64 only. He has unlimited qualities. And 64 are prominent. <laughs> He has got unlimited qualities and 64 are prominent. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Jiva Tattva, how many qualities they have? For sure not unlimited. Limited. And there is a number to that. What is that number which Chaitanya Charitamrit talks about? Huh? 26 is not devotee qualities. 50 qualities. 50 qualities living entities have. Lord Chaitanya, when you are speaking to Sanatan Goswami, this is in Madhya Leela, Chaitanya Charita Amrit. Chapter 23, Shloka 77 onwards. He says, Jeveshva ete vasanto pi bindu bindu taya kvachit paripurna taya bhanti tatraiva purushottame. So these 50 qualities are there in full when it comes to Supreme Lord. But when it comes to the living entities, Bindu Bindu Taya Bhati. Extremely small amount of these qualities are present in living entities. Sometimes it might be there, sometimes it might not be there. If it is there, then it is in minute quantity. So this point has to be clearly understood. All 50 are not there in full. In living entities, they are there in full when it comes to the Lord. But there are five more qualities which are not there in living entities. And these qualities are there in Girisha. Atha pancha guna esyur amshena girishadishu. So there are five extra qualities which are there. So 50 qualities are there in Lord Shiva. That too for a great extent. And extra five qualities which living entities don't have. And these five qualities are there in Lord Shiva. Now the question comes. So these five qualities are there in full for Lord Shiva? And the answer is no. Therefore, they said amshena, portion or little, but to a great extent as compared to the living entities. So amshena, so small amount of these five qualities is there in Lord Shiva, but all these 55 qualities are there in Lord Vishnu. Okay, what about uh, Vishnu Tattvas, the other incarnations of the Lord? So there are five more qualities. So 60 qualities are there in all the incarnations of Vishnu. All the Vishnu Tattvas, all the expansions of the Lord, all the Swamshas you can say. 
But now the question comes, what about Lord Krishna? How is he supreme? He has got 64 qualities, 4 extra qualities. We will not get into these different qualities, just for information we should know. So you see, living entity, 50 qualities, I'm showing a little. Supreme Lord, 64 qualities to the full. These 50 qualities are also included in the 64. And in between we have Lord Shiva with how many qualities? 55 qualities. And that also, yes, for a great extent, but then in full is present in Lord Krishna. So in this way we understand that how Lord Shiva is in between the Jiva Tattva and the Vishnu Tattva. So he is separate, he is Shambhu Tattva. So what are these five qualities? Sada Swarupa Samprataha. Oh, this is very nice. Sada Swarupa Samprataha. Lord Shiva also is an eternal personality as I already said. He doesn't change. So he is always situated in his original position. He will never change like other Devi Devtas or we living entities. And then, okay, another point is like we change bodies. He will not change bodies. Why? Sat Chit Ananda Sandranga. His Anga, his body is Sachidananda. We are also Sachidananda. But as of now, we believe that we are there in this body which, which is Asat, Achit, and Nirananda. So we are stuck in this body and we are fully confirmed. Fully realized, I am this body and not spirit soul. Yeah, when we get ill, when we get sick, we are fully realized at that time. I am not this body. I'm, sorry, I am not the spirit soul. I am this body. Pakka. So, when it comes to Lord Shiva, he is Satchidananda Sandranga. Another very important quality. Saravagya is all-knowing. Like Lord Krishna is all-knowing. All-knowing in the material world. Nitya Nautanaha. You will never find uh, paintings, traditional paintings of Lord Shiva with uh, white beard, white hair and all that. Nitya Nautanaha. Ever youthful and fresh. He never becomes old like Krishna. Sarva Siddhi Nishevitaha. He is that personality who possess mystic perfections. He has got a lot of mystic potencies, mystic powers. So in this way, we understand that how Lord Shiva, he has got these five qualities. Obviously, the quantity might be less as compared to Lord Krishna, but he has got these five qualities more than as compared to the living entities of this world. So in this way, Lord Shiva or Shiva Tattva is there between the Jiva Tattva and the Vishnu Tattva. Now let's try to make it more complex and try to go deeper and understand. See, when it comes to creation of the Lord, there is something called as Tripad Vibhuti and Pada Vibhuti. Tripad Vibhuti means three-fourth of Lord's creation and Pada Vibhuti means one-fourth of Lord's creation. So three-fourth of Lord's creation is the spiritual world. That's called as Tripad Vibhuti. And that place is eternal. That place is full of bliss. And that place, all the living entities, the devotees of the Lord, always immersed in devotional service. So that is normal residence. And this is Pada Vibhuti or one-fourth creation of the Lord. And this one-fourth creation is a prison house. So all the normal citizens are there in that place and all the criminals are put here. One-fourth of creation. Now see, one important point to note that when it comes to normal citizens, yes, Lord can take care. He is Leela Purushottama. So when he is Leela Purushottama, he is always busy doing his Leelas with all his devotees in the spiritual world. He can just ignore all this kachara of this material world. All prisoners go hell with them. He can ignore also. But Krishna never ignores any living entity. They are my part and parcel. How can I ignore them? He does not ignore. So even when we are there in the prison, Lord Krishna takes care of us. The first thing that he does for all of us is he does this entire creation. How this material world comes into existence? If you talk about the Purusha avatars, how, how does it come into existence? So first is Mahavishnu. How does Mahavishnu create? By his? Before glancing? He breathes. He exhales and all the universes come out. And then he glances on them. And when he glances... And all the living entities are impregnated. Now, a very important point. See, when it comes to Lord, 
he doesn't uh, create hmm? wherein he is going and painting and you know putting bricks and cement and all that no he doesn't do that low level job that is delegated hmm? when it comes to lord simple sir aikshata he glances and the creation is done this is our lord very difficult to understand yes another description that comes is he just wills and everything is set everything is done so now here comes the question where is lord shiva another very important thing to confuse all of us the supreme lord is gunatita he is beyond three modes of material nature now when he is beyond three modes of material nature how is he coming in touch with material nature when it's when it is said that he impregnates the material nature it means he is coming in touch with maya he is coming in touch with material nature if that is the case and how is he gunatita about three modes of material nature there is something in between that happens which only devotees know who read shastra and what happens in between lord glances and when that glance comes in touch with the material nature that glance manifests as sada shiva so sada shiva is that personality who impregnates the material nature now the question comes what is the praman for this because when krishna says aham bija pradapita it's krishna who is you know bija pradapita he is giving he is the seed giving father he is very clear in bhagavad gita what is the praman and the praman is there in 8th canto shrimad bhagavatam 7th chapter where lord shiva is drinking poison so in that particular past time all the demigods they approach lord shiva and there lord prabhupada is writing a purport and in that he gives praman he says when the lord says in bhagavad gita 14 chapter shloka number 4 that he is the father of all living entities aham bija pradapita this refers to actions performed by lord vishnu through lord shiva so this refers to actions performed by lord vishnu through lord shiva so impregnating the material nature lord is not doing himself instrument is there who is that instrument of the lord lord shiva is the instrument of the lord so wonderful it is there everything is there in prabhupada's purport somehow we just skim through and don't study so that's the problem okay now let's try to understand this more deeper in brahma samhita the famous shloka whenever we talk about lord shiva and lord krishna we talk about the shloka everyone together if you all know the shloka we can chant together shiram yatha dadi vikara vishesha yoga sanjayate nahitata pritagasti hetoh yah shambhutam api tatha samupaitya karya गोविंदमादिपुरुषम तम अहम भजामि यस ब्रह्म संहिता इज वेरी नाइस लास्ट लाइन एवरीवन नोस नाउ हियर कम्स अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोका एंड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर श्लोका ऑफ ब्रह्म संहिता भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर ही गिव्स अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स परपट इफ यू वांट यू कैन रीड एंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स at least enough for understanding this i i might have read it four five times what is actually he trying to say now in this the analogy of milk and curd is given to understand to make us understand the tattva that is shiva tattva <coughs> basically the comparison between lord krishna and lord shiva so two substances are mentioned here milk and curd shiram and dadhi so shiram means milk and dadhi means curd now it's very important to note that milk when it comes in touch mm-hmm. with some sour things or some culture like bacteria or whatever that gets transformed into curd mm-hmm. now similarly when lord vishnu is glancing that glance when it comes in touch with the culture of this material world and bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he writes when this becomes adulterated mm-hmm. so at that time this personality comes into picture that is sada shiva or curd so milk getting transformed into curd now here comes the question is curd same as milk is curd same as milk yes 
this is what whenever some question is asked when it comes to siddhanta yes or no the answer should be both <laughs> because we come from the philo- we understand and we come from the lineage of chaitanya mahaprabhu and our philosophy is achintya bheda bhed simultaneously yes and no so here the answer is yes because when it comes to curd and milk both come from the same source and both are dairy products similarly when it comes to lord shiva easy same as lord krishna answer is yes he is also personality of godhead but again it's no now you cannot have preparation say you're making sweet rice and you put curd in that instead of milk so that will not be sweet rice i'll not i don't know what it will be <laughs> similarly the see when the curd is not able to replace the milk similarly one thing i have to understand is that there is a difference difference between the two personalities lord shiva and lord krishna they are different so he is personality of godhead but he is not supreme personality of godhead now this is also a very important thing to note that milk can become curd but curd cannot become milk correct yes so milk can become curd what does that mean lord krishna can do anything and everything that lord shiva does so lord krishna can be called as lord shiva but it cannot go the go the reverse direction lord shiva cannot be called as lord krishna because he cannot do everything that lord krishna does see how deep this tatva is and shila bhakti siddhanta sarasvati thakur he writes the supremacy of shambhu is subservient to that of govinda in the work of mundane creation as the material cause mundane creation he is involved in that in the work of preservation by destruction of several asuras and in the work of destruction to conduct the whole operation govinda manifests himself as guna avatar in the form of shambhu who is the separated portion of govinda imbued with the principle of his subjective plenary portion so this guna avatar aspect is also you know very uh, important you know to understand see when it comes to lord shiva he is the incarnation of which which mode of material nature which guna ignorance so now when we say lord shiva is in the mode of ignorance so do we mean that he is in ignorance how can he be in ignorance when he is always sachidananda he doesn't change with all those five qualities that we discussed how can he be in ignorance so whenever we say that lord shiva is the incarnation of mode of ignorance or in the mode of ignorance it means he displays and manifests various qualities in ignorance to do his seva that is assigned to him he is actually not in ignorance this has to be clear because if this is not clear then will come at offenses therefore here it's very clear that lord shiva is that father of this material world but when we consider both material and spiritual world we understand it's lord krishna but when we take only material world there is no harm in saying that lord shiva is the father because durga is the mother therefore very beautifully kalidas in his kumar sambhava his propat quotes multiple times he says jagatah pitaro vande parvati parmeshwaro so who are the parents of this world shiva and parvati they are the parents of this world okay we understand all this but what about this sada shiv shiv shambhu so much of complication and along with that rudra is also there into picture how to understand these different terminologies are they same person different person if yes no what is what is the difference what is the similarity what is that it has to be understood see like we have three vishnus we have mahavishnu we have garbhodaksha vishnu and we have shirodaksha vishnu so only when someone is asking us about uh, difference between different uh, personalities different forms of shiva then we should first tell them do you know about vishnu if you don't know then there's no point in understanding you know different forms of lord shiva because only when you understand these different forms of vishnu it becomes a bit clear that okay he's the same personality but he's doing different different activities his activities are different from mahavishnu comes various universes <clears throat> then his expansion enters his plenary portion enters the universe and in that universe 
the various other creation happens the first living entity that is created is brahma and then when brahma does the secondary creation then he enters each and every atom as shirodaksha vishnu or parmatma so now you see distinctly we can see that services or the activities that these different vishnu incarnations are doing the purusha avatars basically similarly when it comes to lord shiva or sada shiva they have different different activities to do like for example when it comes to sada shiva he is involved in creation when it comes to uh, the glancing part impregnating the material nature all that is the role of sada shiva and now when it comes to rudras how many rudras are there 11 rudras so these 11 rudras are involved in destruction they are involved in destruction so therefore whenever we say that what is the job description of lord shiva we say destruction and when we talk about creation we think of brahma when it when it comes to maintenance we talk about vishnu and i heard a very nice fact that this tr- trinity that we talk about that is brahma vishnu and shiva this all came into picture you know during britishers time these britishers talk about this trinity i wrote it somewhere britishers talk about this trinity because that's there in christianity they say that the unity of father the son and the holy spirit are three persons trinity and they started preaching all that so at that time our brahmanas they said we also have trinity we also have brahma vishnu and shiva and from that time onwards it became uh, you know, very much known everywhere that they are the trinity but one thing we have to understand is that even lord shiva does all the three he does creation we understood how the creation he is involved in creation we understand how he does destruction and along with that we should also understand he also is involved in maintenance tell me one example of maintenance which lord shiva is involved in or who, who was involved in one of the past time what maintenance aspect did lord shiva help in yes poison amazing mm-hmm. so when the poison came out of samudra manthan just imagine if the poison would have spread everywhere so at that time we would not be sitting here discussing about shiva tattva <laughs> so it was lord shiva who came there and he drank the entire poison and look at the power of this personality he drank the poison and he was able to hold it in the throat hmm? we cannot hold a rasgulla in the mouth <laughs> we cannot hold that as good line them out he held the poison in the throat can you imagine <laughs> and therefore his name is neela kantha because that poison made his throat neela or blackish and therefore his name is neela kantha so wonderful such an amazing personality if this service was not done by lord shiva where is the question of existence of living entities he is also involved in maintenance you know that is the point that is made here but lord krishna makes a statement in bhagavad gita 10th chapter shloka 23 rudranam shankaras chasmi he says out of the 11 rudras i am shankar i am shiva oh so now sada shiva is there rudra is there and in that shiva is also there so the prominent among the rudras is called as shankar or shiva now this shiva term is a generic term that can be used for sada shiva also and it can be used for rudras also depending on what job description is there for these personalities if someone talks about creation now this shiva is sada shiva when we talk about annihilation then this shiva is rudra and is this shiva who is there with parvati in the spiritual in the sada shiva lok and when it comes to this shiva you now there in this world doing various activities as the parents of uh, the living entities then yes you know he is one of the rudras also therefore widely known fact about lord shiva is annihilation many times you will see that when lord shiva's painting is made he will be made in like a ferocious person who is ready to annihilate everything but then when he is there besides parvati shan the so lord shiva is setting an example what should an husband do <laughs> shan chup chap bro in fact it is so nice lord shiva is such a wonderful householder 
So when the demigods came to him, that poison has come out of Samudra. Please come and please accept this drink for yourself. At that time, Lord Shiva first goes to Parvati and he takes her permission. Can I go? And at that time, Parvati gives permission. Okay, go can go. And Lord Shiva goes and does the job. <laughs> On a serious note, Lord Shiva goes and informs that this is what is the service I've got, I'm going. So very nice to see that uh, all the husbands and wives of this world, they're in parampara of Lord Shiva and Lord uh, and Parvati. So it's very nice to see that how they're actually parents of this world, you know, in various ways, in various ways. Therefore, this is the distinction between Sadashiv, Shiv and Rudra. I hope this is clear. Now, talking about the different dhams which are available in this world. We have Devi Dham. That is this world. This world is called as Devi Dham. And who is that Devi? Durga. And this world is called as Durg. Durg means fort. And the caretaker of this fort is Durga, who has got a Trishul in the hand. And that Trishul represents the three kleshas. Ad Adhyatmika Klesha, Adi Bhautika Klesha, Adi Daivika Klesha. Sufferings caused by body and mind, other living entities and the natural calamities or the nature. Then above the Devi Dham, above this entire material creation, is the spiritual world. That's called as Hari Dham. And this Hari Dham has got different sections. The lowest one is Vaikuntha planets, you know, where the different incarnations of Vishnu are there. And above that, Ayodhya Dham, you know, where Lord Ram is there. And then we have, the topmost is Goloka. Let me make it more complex. Goloka is also divided into three parts. Goloka Dwarka, Goloka Mathura and Goloka Vrindavan. Where do you want to go? We want to go to Goloka Vrindavan. Therefore, Shla Prabhupada says that the topmost planet in the spiritual world is Goloka Vrindavan. So in this way, we understand that is spiritual world and this Devi Dham. Devi Dham, Hari Dham. Oh, in between there is something called as Mahesh Dham. So this is above the Viraja river, the causal ocean. So on the causal ocean is what Lord Vish Mahavishnu is lying on. But above the causal ocean is this Mahesh Dham. And it's very nice to note that Lord Shiva, who is above the causal ocean, is not affected by destruction and this and that of this material world. He's above all that. And there is a very nice uh, description that is given in the Goloka chart, if you refer to Riskan's Goloka chart. Very nice description in the form of painting, where there's something called a Sadashiv Lok that exists. But there is this round structure that is made. We have Brahma Jyoti, yes. So part of this planet is there in Brahma Jyoti and part of it is there in you know, below. Now that part that is there in Brahma Jyoti, that is effulgent and that is called a Sadashiv Lok. And the part that is below Brahma Jyoti, that is called as Mahakal Lok which is dark. And very nicely it is described that the time factor of the Lord is associated with this Mahakal or Lord Shiva. So when you say Lord Shiva, all these different personalities come into picture. All these different names will come into picture. You can imagine such a great personality. Such a great personality. So many times, you know, people say that Lord Shiva can also give Mukti. But then when it comes to Vaishnavas, they say, no, there is only Mukunda who can give Mukti. The one who can give Mukti is called as Mukunda and that Mukunda is Krishna. But you know what? Both are true. Lord Shiva can, can also give Mukti and Lord Krishna can also give Mukti. How to reconcile these two statements? Very nicely it is described. The father of this material creation is Lord Shiva. He is the father of this creation. He is the in charge of the material creation. And whenever we talk about in charge of a spiritual creation, a spiritual world, that is Lord Krishna. Mm. So one very important thing to note, Lord Shiva can do all the transformations needed in this material world. In this prison house, in this prison cell, he can do all the changes necessary. He can do the needful. And along with that, one point to note, he has got the key he has got the key of this material world. And Krishna has got the key of the spiritual world. So Lord Shiva can unlock the door and send living entities out of this material world. But where will they go? 
because the key to the spiritual world is there with krishna so only when krishna opens the key to the spiritual world at that time the living entities can enter the spiritual world therefore it's very nice not to note that max to max these personalities who are unlocked by or when mahesha or lord shiva unlocks this material world and when the living entities go out when people say that he's avoiding mukti hmm. so at that time max to max they can go to the brahma jyoti or something like that hmm. they cannot go beyond that they cannot enter spiritual world when it comes to mukunda only he can award that liberation which is called as vaishnav liberation be it sarshti samipya salokya or sarupya these liberations only krishna can award and that is going to spiritual world and living with the lord eternally so i hope this is clear what sort of mukti lord shiva can give and what mukti krishna is giving a very nice concept the keys of material world are there with lord shiva now tell me is he an ordinary personality is lord shiva an ordinary personality he is very very great he is next level there is no comparison with lord shiva in this material world there is no entity whom we can compare with lord shiva he is owning the key of this material world can you imagine and he owns this entire material world because his ardhangini is durga and she is that personality who is taking care of the entire place so in this way we understand that how lord shiva is mukti data but then he can give mukti only from this material world but the actual mukti is given by mukunda who allows the living entities to enter the spiritual world so in this way lord shiva is a very very great personality no doubt about that so creation we understood that how he does creation i'm talking about lord shiva he is involved in the glancing part impregnating part etc we understood about how he participated in maintenance when it comes to destruction shiva does destruction in the form of his rudra his rudra forms he does destruction and his destruction is very nice how does he does dist- how do lord shiva get involved in destruction just by dancing can you imagine just by dancing just by dancing lord shiva destroys his entire world i heard a very nice uh, concept that this destruction that is there is not something evil this is a necessary element in the entire cycle of creation necessary element when we talk about forest fire forest fire is also a necessary element for the forest to survive how see there are many creepers and many unwanted you know shrubs and bushes and all they are burnt at that time and there are many trees you know which are grown but now they are dead they are still standing and they block the sunlight that is there so when this particular thing happens forest fire all these things are burnt and the young trees which are there they get a chance to grow and that's how the entire forest is maintained so when it comes to destruction it's an important element of the cycle of creation and can you imagine lord shiva plays an important role in cycle of creation just by dancing now there is no singer around huh? how does he dance then ha huh? with his dambru as he plays his dambru and he dances and therefore whenever this bharatnatyam and other uh, you know, dance forms which are there they worship lord shiva in the form of nataraj it is called as nataraj so you will see that uh, entire uh, deity well uh, the hair around having so many forms and uh, you know he's dancing he is nataraj when he dances it's he's you know, that's really very very ferocious to look at very very dangerous dance that is there you now with every beat of dambru something is getting destroyed in one hand he has fire you know very lit's fire everywhere on the other hand he has dambru and he goes on jumping like that and dancing therefore i always say that in askon the youth forum boys comes in the lineage of lord shiva <laughs> because when it comes to lord krishna his dance is very graceful even when he was dancing on the hoods of kaliya it was very very graceful he was dancing and dancing and was so graceful that all the gandharvas and apsaras they were looking at oh even we don't dance like this we don't like dance like this and when it comes to lord shiva he is just thunder and he destroys this world mm-hmm. so in this way we understand that how when it comes to lord shiva 
he gets involved in creation, maintenance, and destruction, all the three. Lord Shiva has got a very wonderful quality. He is Rudra, at the same time is Ashutosh. He gets easily angry, and at the same time he's easily pleased. He gave me one example from Shastra. Ravana is an example. Ravana was was in his own mood. He wanted to conquer Kuvera and Kuvera is there in Kailash. And Ravana has that audacity to lift the entire Kailash Parvat. And Lord Shiva is there in his meditation. And Lord Shiva, he gets disturbed, he gets angry. And in that anger, he doesn't do much. He just pushes his toe on the ground a bit hard. And the entire mountain goes down with force and just imagine Ravan's fingers were there below the mountain and the mountain is there on the ground. So his entire hand or both the hands, I don't know if 20 hands were involved in that, all that was crushed. And at that time he was told you know, by one of his associates, start glorifying Lord Shiva, appease Lord Shiva, if you appease him, you'll get everything. And then at that time Ravan He's a Brahmana. He knows Sanskrit. And with, with his eloquence of Sanskrit, he started glorifying Lord Shiva, the choicest prayers. And guess what? That angry personality became pleased to such an extent that he gave a sword you know, to Ravan as a gift. This is Bolenath. <laughs> easily gets angry and at the same time easily gets pacified. Ashutosh. Therefore, it is said that in this material world, people go behind Lord Shiva because he is easily pleased. Basmasur was one of them. Can you imagine Basmasur? He pleased Lord Shiva. And then when Lord Shiva appears in front of him, Basmasur is asking that give me a benediction that whosoever head I keep my hand, that head should burst. Tathastu. Yes. Lord Shiva gave the benediction and Basmasur is going behind Lord Shiva to try the benediction given by Lord Shiva. He wanted to touch the head of Lord Shiva. He wanted to give Ashirvad to Lord Shiva after getting Ashirvad from Lord Shiva. <laughs> now see, Lord Shiva's benediction is as you know, similar or identical to himself. Now Lord Shiva knows that this very powerful benediction that I have given. So he started running. And rest of the past time, he knows that how the little Brahmana boy or the Mohini, she comes. Lord Vishnu himself in this disguise, he comes and he helps Lord Shiva. And like this, you know, we have you know, so many pastimes where Lord Shiva, he becomes angry. At the same time, he gets pacified very fast. So many personalities worship Lord Shiva and they can be categorized into two. The first category is all the ghosts and goblins. And the other category is his great yogis. See the dress that Lord Shiva wears? Firstly, he hardly wears anything. He has got snakes on his body, scorpions on his body. From the crematorium, fresh ash from the crematorium he'll take and put it all over his body. He has skulls on his body. And he has got his various uh, uh, goats and goblins around him. So one thing that we understand is the rejects of this material world who, who wants to associate with ghosts? If there is any sound at night and there is no one and you are the only one and you get to know there is a ghost, I don't think you'll be happy. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. Run, run away from that place. No one wants to associate with ghosts. They're rejects of this material world. And look at Lord Shiva's merciful nature. After all, he's a Vaishnav. He's very, very merciful. He accepts all of them. All the ghosts and goblins. He accepts all of them. And by the association of Lord Shiva, they get purified and they get delivered. This is the glory of Lord Shiva. So he associates with the inauspicious entities of this world. But still his Shiva. And Shiva means auspicious. Therefore you will see that see that many people have the name Shivam. Shiva. What, the, what does that mean? Auspicious. So he associates with inauspicious entities, but still he remains auspicious. And since he's auspicious, we have the other category of people who worship them, worship him. They are the great yogis. And therefore, one of the name of Lord Shiva is Yogeshwara. And Lord Krishna's name is Yogeshwara. So the Ishwara of all the yogis is Lord Shiva. 
and Ishwara of all the mystic powers of all these yogis is Lord Krishna. Therefore, he said, the topmost hmm, or uh, the personality who has all the mystical potencies or the Ishwara of all the mystical potencies is Yogeshwara, that is Krishna. Hmm. So, in this way, we see that how different personalities of this world they take shelter of Lord Shiva and they get purified in various ways. Very nice to note that he is Yogeshwara. And if you have to be a yogi, you have to leave the family. But when it comes to Lord Shiva, he has a family. He has a big family. He has his, he has his two kids, Ganesha and Kartikeya. He has you know, various snakes on his body. He has a wife, a beautiful uh, wife. Maintaining all of them, still he is the Ishwara of all the yogis. Which is a great contradiction. But reconciles in Lord Shiva. And very nice thing to note... And even after having all these different powers, Lord Shiva is a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Therefore, the shloka that we chanted, Vaishnavanam Yatha Shambhu. In all the Vaishnavas, Lord Shiva is the topmost Vaishnav. And even in Srimad Bhagavatam, when there is a list of Mahajans you know, that is given by Yamaraj in 6th canto, at that time, in the first line itself, it says, Swayambhu Narada Shambhu. Can you imagine? Lord Shiva is that personality who goes around preaching the glories of Lord Krishna to such an extent that he has got one Sampradaya in his name called Rudra Sampradaya. And Vallabhacharya comes in this line. And this Sampradaya exists till now in Gujarat and some parts of Rajasthan also. Can you imagine such a great personality is Lord Shiva? But still, when it comes to worshipping Lord Shiva, there is one danger that is there. See, when it comes to the devotees of Lord Krishna, they go and ask the Lord, Oh Lord, please give me this, please give me that. And Lord Krishna is like, Kuch bhi hai. There's a praman for this hut also. Huh? Just like that I'm not saying. There's a praman in Chaitanya Charitamba where Lord Krishna is saying, Krishna kahe ama bhaje maage vishay sok amra chadi vish maage e bada murk <laughs> The Krishna is saying that these people, they worship me. And what are they asking? The Vage Vishay Sukh. Oh, they're leaving the nectar and they're asking for sense gratification. Ami Vigya, Krishna is saying. Ami Vigya, but I'm intelligent. A Murke, A Murke Vishay Kene Devo. So it's very nice and aware, Lord Krishna is saying that. He is asking me sense gratification. But I am intelligent. He is Murkha. Why will I give him sense gratification? At that time, Lord Krishna is saying, Swa charnamrata diya vishai bhulaibo. I will give my own lotus feet to him and make sure that he forgets all the sense gratificatory desires. Haribo. <laughs> because of this reason, many people of this world don't worship Lord Krishna. <laughs> Because they know very well. <laughs> because the entire uh, history of devotees getting benediction from Lord Krishna, there it's very clear that devotee goes with the intense mood of sense gratification and they're asking Lord Krishna, give me this, give me that. And Lord Krishna is like, keep coming, I'll give you. Keep coming, I'll give you. And what happens? That devotee becomes a pure devotee and then Lord Krishna is asking you were asking this, I want to give you. What, what do you say? You want it? You're like, no. I don't want anything. Kuch ichha mein. <laughs> I don't want anything. Swamin krithartos mi varam nayache. Dhru Maharaj is saying, Vichara kitna tapasya kya? Six months, one full semester he did so much of tapasya. And then after, and that tapasya was not an ordinary tapasya of, you know, doing ekadashi like ourselves. Eating three times. His tapasya was so intense. His tapasya was so intense that finally, towards the end, he was just living on air. And after that, he was not even breathing air. And all that was only for one Abhilash, and that was Thana Abhilash. He wanted kingdom greater than his great-grandfather Brahma. And Lord Vishnu appears in front of him. And Lord Vishnu is asking, Bacha, what do you want? What do you want? And at that time, looking at Lord Vishnu, Dhruva Maharaj is saying, 
swamin karitharthos me varam na yache oh lord i've got your darshan now i don't want anything and lord vishnu is like no no i'll give you i'll give you He's like no i don't want no you have to take and dhru loka was given to him and after getting dhru loka look at the purification that happens when it comes to devotees who approach the uh, lord krishna he was so very purified that after getting dhru loka he was feeling so guilty and he was lamenting why did i ask the lord this particular thing this was the lamentation that was there in the heart of dhru maharaj and when it comes to lord shiva anyone who goes to lord shiva and whatever they ask lord shiva being so merciful tathastu go ahead and that's how basmasur asked that give me a benediction by which i can burst anyone said by keeping my hand on their head and lord shiva amazing benediction take it hari <laughs> krishna <laughs> and what happened after that yes he had to learn so when when it comes to worship of lord krishna lord krishna takes the responsibility of the devotees but when it comes to worship of lord shiva the personalities who are worshiping lord shiva they have to take the responsibility themselves what to ask and what not to ask so there's one danger that is there there's one danger that is there but still you know he's such a great personality therefore the last thing to understand is what is the proper mood of worshiping lord shiva lord shiva is speaking to parvati in padma puran is lord parvati is asking what is the best worship and lord shiva is saying aradhana nam sarvesham vishnu aradhanam param and parvati is thinking are vishnu aradhanam param that is the topmost worship but i am worshiping you at that time he says aradhana nam sarvesham vishnu aradhanam param tasmat parataram devi tadya nam samarchanam but worshiping the devotees of lord vishnu is much more greater than worshiping vishnu and parvati was like okay chalo good <laughs> is i am worshiping you now this is a very important thing to note that when it comes to worshiping lord vishnu or lord sorry when when it comes to worshiping lord shiva what is that worship all about how to worship so when someone is approaching lord shiva and asking for material gains he is not doing proper worship but when someone approaches lord shiva in the mood of a devotee considering him to be the topmost vaishnav and when we approach him and ask for krishna prem that is the right mode in which we can approach him many times people say that uh, even we can go to you know sadashiv lok and we can we can we can become eternal but the worshipers of lord shiva only they cannot go to sadashiv lok this is a shastrik injunction they can max to max lord shiva can unlock the door of this material world max to max they can go out but they cannot enter the spiritual world because sadashiv lok is part of spiritual world who can go to sadashiv lok those people who are in love with lord shiva but worshipers of lord krishna how do we understand this so there are many devotees you know who are worshipers of lord krishna they understand krishna supreme personality of god right with that understanding they have attachment to narasimha dev or lord ram or something like that so they will go to those respective planets because they understand that krishna is supreme personality of godhead and then they are attached to one of the forms of krishna then they can go to the respective loka of that particular incarnation but when someone says that krishna is not supreme personality of godhead lord shiva is supreme personality of godhead this is not acceptable that person cannot go to spiritual world not possible and you take the example of any devotee here we are saying shiva is topmost devotee when lord himself came as chaitanya mahaprabhu in the mood of a devotee and when devotees around would glorify him your krishna himself and at that time chaitanya mahaprabhu being in the mood of a devotee would close his eyes vishnu vishnu what are you saying how can a living entity become krishna this is the mood of a devotee once when uh, some disciples of shila prabhupad started propagating this nonsense that prabhupad is krishna prabhupad was very angry and for some time prabhupad suspended them from iskon hmm. this is the mood of a devotee they cannot hear because they feel this is nonsense they feel bad when they are compared you know to the supreme lord now tell me when people glorify lord shiva as supreme personality of godhead will he feel good obviously he will not feel good but when someone glorifies him as a topmost devotee or just a devotee he is very very pleased 
and such people who understand krishna to be supreme personality of godhead but they are attached to lord shiva by whatever reasons they will go to sada shiva lok they will go to the eternal planet even when it comes to our acharyas in gaudiya vaishnava parampara this mood is very clear shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur when he was in the south indian tour when he went to madurai to shiva temple and minakshi temple there the priests were looking at them that they kahan se aa gaya because at that time there was a great fight between uh, the shaivites and the vaishnavites yes or the vaishnavas shaivites and the vaishnavas and there's a great fight going on and no vaishnava would enter because three vaishnavas i'm talking about they would not enter into demigod temple and here when bhakti siddhanta saraswati entered the temple of lord shiva and minakshi and all the priests were completely astonished and surprised at that time our acharya bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur he made the statement very nicely and he said that when we visit the temple of lord shiva we worship lord shiva not independent god not as an independent entity but as a personality devoted to lord krishna that is vaishnava naam yatha shambhu therefore here we understand very clearly that there is no difference between lord shiva and lord krishna but there is difference and that difference is he is the servitor god where he is serving the lord in various ways and supreme personality of god is krishna only in this way lord shiva is a very very glorious personality therefore whenever we get chance you know, when we go to vrindavan and we have these different uh, you know kshetrapal we have gopeshwar mahadev chakreshwar mahadev kameshwar mahadev and bhuteshwar mahadev in these different different places of vrindavan devotees go and beg and pray to lord shiva that please grant me pure devotional service to the lotus feet of krishna so whenever we have these auspicious occasions devotees go to lord shiva's temple they begin pray to lord shiva the mood is very clear that how lord shiva can bestow his blessings on to all of us therefore in this way when it comes to us we don't reject lord shiva we accept lord shiva as the greatest devotee and we worship him understanding his actual tatva and making him pleased by glorifying the supreme personality of god at krishna because when lord shiva when it comes to lord shiva he himself is in the meditation all the time who whom is he meditating on <clears throat> he is meditating on sankarshan yes sankarshan is the expansion of balram so he is meditating on sankarshan all the time so why will he not be pleased when someone glorifies sankarshan or balram or krishna why will he not be pleased therefore it is described the devotees of lord krishna are devotees of lord shiva by default the other way might not be true but this is for sure therefore on the auspicious days like shivaratri and other days we have to beg and pray you know to lord shiva that you are such a great devotee you please bless me so that i can also render some service to this mission of krishna consciousness by spreading this message of krishna consciousness and glorifying your lord lord shri krishna thank you very much lord shiva ki jai jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki jai